Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says at least 70 people have been killed in an airstrike that hit a refugee camp. The attack came as the World Health Organization visited Gaza's largest hospital again, finding facilities overwhelmed by the number of wounded. Meanwhile, Israel released new footage of what it says is part of Hamas's underground tunnel network. Weapons, ammunition and emergency rooms. Israel's military says this winding network of tunnels is where Hamas oversaw the attacks on October 7th. Soldiers reportedly also found the bodies of five Israeli hostages killed by Hamas while in captivity. In the headquarters, which is located dozens of meters underground, we found weapons, infrastructure for the production of weapons, laboratories where weapons were produced, and emergency rooms where the commander of the headquarters, Ahmed Rondor, led the fighting on October 7th against the state of Israel. Israel says it will now move its focus to southern Gaza in its war to eliminate Hamas which is recognized as a terrorist group by the EU and the US. The push comes as a fresh round of airstrikes hit residential homes in the Magazi refugee camp, killing dozens of people there. During a visit to Al-Shifa Hospital, the largest medical facility in Gaza, World Health Organization officials issued the most dire assessment yet of the humanitarian situation there. I'm back in Al Shifa, the largest hospital in Gaza, for the third time this week, where it's still a case of absolute misery. With people still on the floors, it's almost impossible to walk. Critical cases, doctors and nurses absolutely scrambling, people crying out that they need blood for their son and daughter who are dying. There's almost nothing that this team can do. The WHO stressed that there is still an urgent need of fuel, medicine, food and water, and that a real risk of famine was looming ever larger. And our correspondent Jan Philip Schultz joins us from Jerusalem now. Yeah, Jan Philip, let's first talk about that airstrike on the refugee camp. What more do you know about it? There are reports uh, that more than 70 people died in, in this heavy airstrike uh, on Al Maghazi refugee camp. Uh, this is information provided by uh, the Hamas controlled health ministry, but local journalist, uh, uh, journalists have con confirmed the uh, report. Al Maghazi is a huge refugee uh, site in the central part of Gaza, but Israel has also uh, intensified its military campaign in all other parts of the Strip. Uh, there are reports that. Uh, more than 160 people have uh, died over the weekend. Uh, uh, journalists on the ground describe horrible scenes of uh, panicking families and once again completely overwhelmed medical facilities. And Jan Philip, you were in Bethlehem yesterday where, as many of our viewers know, for centuries Christian pilgrims usually celebrate the birth of, of Jesus. But this year, no celebrations. Why is that? A uh, representative from all churches said it's uh, impossible to uh, celebrate at the moment with all the destruction around. And indeed, it was a very, very grim atmosphere. No tourists, uh, no lights, no big Christmas tree, no children buying candy uh, from street vendors. The marching band that usually accompanies the Latin uh, patriarch uh, with joyful music uh, passed by in complete silence, which was really a very uh, intensive scene. And um, everybody agreed it's impossible to celebrate. The only installation was a nativity scene that uh, showed Jesus uh, being born in the middle of uh, destruction and rubble. And just to, I imagine that must have been an incredibly moving thing to, to see, but to step back to the, look at the bigger picture of this conflict, reports were hearing that the Israelis may be thinking of stopping or slowing their military campaign. Are they founded reports? What are you hearing? Well, what is sure is that the United States have once again increased pressure on Israel uh, to um, what they say uh, carry out more targeted uh, attacks. Uh, President Biden stressed once again the importance to protect civilians and there are local media reports 
uh, regarding a new proposal from uh, Egypt. Uh, the Israeli government is uh, discussing this proposal at the moment. Um, according to local media sources, uh, it contains several steps, uh, including uh, temporary truce, uh, then the release of more hostages and new peace negotiations. But at the same time, uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu once again stressed that Israel will carry on the war until the complete destruction of uh, Hamas, uh, however long it will take. All right, DW's Jan Philipp Schultz in Jerusalem. And we're going to talk live now to the WHO official we just saw in that report. It's Sean Casey, who is the emergency medical team coordinator, who is joining us from Rafa now. Thank you, Sean. Um, we just watched you there visiting the biggest medical complex in Gaza, the Al-Shifa Hospital. Tell us more about what was going on there when you visited. Thanks. So this was my third visit to Al-Shifa in, in about a week. And what I've seen is... Uh, a similar situation in the emergency department with just hundreds of patients streaming in pretty constantly. Patients being rolled in on stretchers along the street. Uh, patients being carried in by their family members, being brought in on donkey carts um, and even on trolleys. Uh, hundreds of patients on gurneys on the floor. Uh, family members desperately crying out for assistance. and a very, very small team of doctors and nurses, only five or six doctors, five or six nurses, and some volunteers from the community, some paramedics, medical students, nursing students, uh, trying to care for these patients. But it's absolute chaos and absolute misery. Um, and, and what makes it even more challenging is that the hospital itself has been directly struck. And there are 50,000, I was told when I was there two days ago, 50,000 displaced persons living in the hospital building. So I walked across the surgical ward. Uh, you can see the dark stairways that we went up and down. There are people everywhere living in the stairwells, living in the operating theaters. Um, the whole building is occupied because people view it as a, one of the few safer spaces. There's no safe place in Gaza, not anywhere in Gaza at the moment, um, mm. but it's, it's considered one of the safest options. So it's extremely crowded, it's extremely full. We delivered some medical supplies, uh, some fuel, uh, we have a team going up again uh, tomorrow to deliver more fuel uh, and to establish some some kitchens with World Central Kitchen to hopefully be able to provide food for patients and staff. Uh, but what we've also seen is uh, a rising level of desperation. Um, really, people's dignity has been stolen. Uh, they are, are just crying out for food and water. Um, desperate for assistance that's very slow to come. Uh, so it's, it's, just, a, it's a really disheartening and sad situation. Well, uh, let me just ask you a question about something we can't see in those pictures, but that you talk about in your report, which is the risk of infectious dis diseases. Uh, how dangerous is it to have all those people gathered in the hospital area in a situation where I guess the drinking water is hard to come by? How concerned are you about a major infectious disease outbreak? We're very concerned about the possibility of an outbreak. I mean, what we see in all of these videos, and it's very obvious, is a lot of trauma, right? A lot of gunshot wounds, blast injuries, people bleeding with uh, broken limbs, burn cases and things like that. But behind the scenes, what you maybe don't see as uh, in such a shocking way is the camp settings. Um, even just behind me in this building, if you look out the window, there's thousands of people living in makeshift shelters um, that are planks of wood with plastic tarpaulin over them. In the hospital, there's 50,000 people crammed into a building. There isn't enough water. Actually, the, most of the groundwater here in Gaza is salty. Uh, so much of the water isn't actually potable. Uh, and so uh, there's no sanitation facilities uh, in many of these spontaneous uh, camps or shelters. And so we have serious concerns about the risk of communicable disease, infectious disease, and as well, I mean, people who need routine care, pregnant women who need antenatal care, people with diabetes, people with chronic conditions, they're not getting access to services in most of Gaza right now. About 80% of the health system is not functioning. Can so I jump left in is there? Very minimal. On what you were saying about new mothers, um, 
who have had, well, I guess the misfortune to be giving birth during a war. We understand there's um, problems getting, well, breastfeeding. Um, there, there's, there's not powdered milk. There's a risk of malnutrition. Is that the case? Is that a concern? How do you help these people? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there, there's nobody that I've met in the hospitals of Gaza or in the streets of Gaza who hasn't told me about the need for food and water, that they're hungry, that their children are hungry, um, that they, they can't find food, that they don't have money to buy food if it's available. There are some places actually where food is being sold, but nobody has money to buy it. Um, people, you know, when there's food trucks that uh, are able to get through, uh, they are offloaded by desperate crowds almost instantly. Um, so the level of desperation is enormous. And, and for pregnant women and, and, and young babies, it's even more acute. And real quick, if you don't mind, uh, the, as you know, the uh, Security Council uh, voted to allow in some more humanitarian aid. Is it anywhere near enough? So there's two sides to this. One is getting more aid into Gaza. So across the Rafa crossing through Krem Shalom, uh, across the crossing into Gaza, the Gaza Strip. Then there's the other challenge, which is getting it to the last mile. So getting it to the people who need it the most, particularly, you know, now we've got about a million displaced persons in Rafa in the southern part of Gaza. There's increased hostilities in the area just north of here in Khan Yunus. Um, and in the middle area, uh, there's, there's lots of active fighting. So it's very difficult. The road conditions are awful. Every time okay. we do a convoy to the north, we have, have punctures, we have checkpoints, we have delays. And the people who are getting the aid are the people who are able to rush the trucks, actually. So people with disabilities and older people have okay. even more difficulties facing them. It's, it's, it's very difficult to, to get to that last mile. Understood. Well, thank you for your time and your good work. Sean Casey, the WHO Emergency Team Coordinator in Rafa, Gaza. Thank you. And sticking with that story, let's go now to Hiba Tibi, who is the country director for the NGO CARE in the Palestinian territories and is joining us from Ramallah. Um, tell me, is your organization able to provide any relief to people in Gaza at the moment? Good morning, dear, and uh, um, it's a very hard time, but still there are uh, possibilities of interventions and actions, delivery of aid in the south of Gaza, but not in the north. My colleagues coordinate with WHO, with other UN agencies, other international organizations and humanitarian organizations, very limited quantities of interventions. For instance, CARE is focusing on medical supplies and hygiene kits, and this is what we continue to do. But again, very limited amount and, and quantities to hospitals and to people. And just in terms of what the international community, the world community is doing, the United Nations Security Council passed a resolution to boost more aid and 120 trucks I hear yesterday entered Gaza on Sunday. Is that enough to change things? It is, it is good change. The increase in the number of trucks entering Gaza is good. But if you can imagine that pre before the war, the number was higher. Part of it would be commercial, part of it would be humanitarian. All of Gaza now is under humanitarian need. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you heard about the uh, food security report that was released uh, last week, late last week, that shows that Gaza is, is now having between the highest stages, uh, a catastrophic famine stage, uh, where is the numbers that are coming from Gaza are almost three times higher than any previously implemented assessments carried out by the same tool that was used. Unfortunately, that gives an, a, a, an insight of the number of people who are starving, who are unfortunately dehydrating. A couple of weeks ago, we said we are, are very afraid to reach that situation. We arrived there. 120 trucks don't include only food or water, but it includes everything. So you can imagine how much this is limited compared to the number of people in need. And mind you, we are talking mainly about the south. In the north, the numbers are extremely... Uh, um, it, the families are living in very harsh conditions, worse even than the South, because of the very, very limited aid assistance that enters to the North. 
And a final quick question, if I may. You mentioned people starving. We've reports of ki children losing the actual will to thrive, the keenness to eat. They stopped speaking or eating because of the immense psychological trauma. Are you worried about that? How can you help those kids? This is one of the hardest questions that you ask me, uh, and it feels very harsh because we have seen this. Unfortunately, this is happening to one of my colleagues' children, and everyone is trying to help. They are trying, but it's it's impossible. We feel traumatized with what we are seeing on the on the screens and living it for 80 days almost now is something that is very, very worrying. One of the, the major areas of intervention after war when ceasefire is attained is going to be psychological support to help people th survive, not forget, but survive what they have gone through, unfortunately. Okay, Hiba TV. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Country Director of NGO Care in Ramallah. Thank you. And with the war raging in Gaza, Pope Francis has appealed for peace in a solemn Christmas Eve mass at the Vatican. The pontiff made numerous references to violence and war during his address in St. Peter's Basilica without directly naming Israel or Gaza. Francis said hearts around the world were in Bethlehem. He'll lead traditional Christmas Day prayers later on Monday morning.